Greetings to all of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's a matter of great joy for me to be with you all once again and share from God's word the Bible. We are looking at a book called Philippians, a small four chaptered book written by Apostle Paul. And we have seen how the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ affect every area of our life. We learned about gospel driven life, gospel driven fellowship, gospel driven prayer, gospel driven ministry. And we also learned what is the foundation of being a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. We learned from Paul's life that the circumstances and situations in his life did not dictate terms with his life. But God, the sovereign God who created Paul, the sovereign God who saved Paul from his sin, he dictated the terms and he is the one who scheduled and planned Paul's life and Paul's ministry and Paul understood that. And for him to live was Christ and to die was gain. And for him to, to believe in that, that by death or by life, he had only one desire, that Jesus Christ, the King of glory, should be magnified, honored and exalted in and through his life. And he was very confident that this God will achieve and accomplish that in and through his life. And we also learned during the last class that Paul had a desire to be in this world, to be a testimony and witness for the Lord. And also he was so comfortable and he was so happy to depart and be with Christ. So he was well prepared for life and he was well prepared for death. That is what should happen in every human being and our life should be a well content and well satisfied life and even for as we look to the prospects of death, we should be prepared for that. And I shared during the last classes that Jesus Christ can help us to prepare our life in a content way for life and death. We already learned why Paul liked to die and be with Christ. Why he liked or he thought that it is better to depart and be with Christ. We, we learned about his desire, personal desire, longing and that love sickness, that homesickness to be with God of the universe in heaven. And that permeated his life. And we learned how that can be true in your life and my life. Today, I would, I would like to read from Philippians chapter 1 verse 22 part A all the way to 24 and 25. Here Paul rejoices to labor or work for the benefit of God's people. Well then, we come now to Paul's second holy ambition as revealed in this passage. His first ambition was to depart and be with Christ because it is far better. Here we, we read about Paul's second ambition as revealed in this passage. On the one hand, he longed to depart from this life and to be with Christ. But on the other hand of the sanctified dilemma, we learn that Paul also rejoiced to labor for the benefit of God's people. He rejoiced to labor for the benefit of God's people. Read with me starting in verse 22 of Philippians chapter 1. But if I am to live on in the flesh, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Skip to verse 24. To remain in the flesh is more necessary for your sake. Convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with you all for your progress and joy in the faith. As much as Paul yearns to die and to be with Christ, he also recognizes that his continuing on in the flesh will mean fruitful labor and increased benefit for God's people. And as he considers and assesses the situation, he recognizes that the Philippian church is a young church, only about 10 to 12 years old, and that there are issues that exist within the church that indicate they would greatly benefit from apostolic instruction. Issues like the importance of steadfastness in the face of false teaching and persecution. Paul, uh, Philippians need to 
be unified unity among disagreeing brothers and sisters and they wanted they needed to learn humility and regarding one another as more important than oneself and the importance of re rejoicing in the midst of tests and trials so all these things paul can teach the the believers in philippians if he is going to continue in this world or if he is going to live in this world and without any direct revelation from god but with a keen understanding of god's providential caring working as christ builds his church in those formative days paul becomes convinced that god's sovereign plan includes his remaining and continuing on in his ministry again this is not because of any special revelation otherwise there would be no reason to say that he would he didn't know which to prefer if god told him directly he would set his heart on what god told him but because of his perception of the situation he comes to a conviction that he will most likely be released from prison prison and will continue on for the benefit of god's people and so as we considered the first holy ambition of this sanctified dilemma we got a fuller understanding of what it means for the faithful follower of christ to die is gain to die is gain means you prepared for yourself for death you live in the anticipation of leaving this world and doing with your ministry you live in constant homesickness where you look towards heaven you look towards the lord jesus christ and you express your desire and longing to be with him now as we turn to the second sanctified passion we discover more of what it means to be a godly person that to live is christ in other words how does the christian who would be overjoyed to depart and be with christ forever how does that christian live faithfully if i have that anticipation and that longing to be with christ and that is far better how that is going to affect and reflect in my faithful living on a day to day basis when he realizes that at least for now it's not god's will that he be taken home what is the christian life all about well the first thing that paul speaks about in verse 22 is faithful labor living life for christ to live is christ means faithful labor paul is telling but if i am to live on in the flesh this will mean fruitful labor for me faithful labor for me he is speaking there of the toilsome labor of the gospel ministry it is not an easy job in verse 25 he calls it laboring for the philippians the progress and joy in the faith progress and joy in the faith the point is paul's alternative to dying and being with christ did not mean an easy refreshing retirement for him in this world to live on in the flesh did not mean playing relaxing games while he cruised through this life it meant work it meant labor it meant hard work labor toil striving he wrote in colossians chapter 1 verse 28 we proclaim jesus christ admonishing every man and teaching every man with all wisdom so that we may present every man complete in christ so what is the purpose of our gospel driven ministry what was the purpose of paul's ministry whatever he was doing was to proclaim jesus christ proclaim jesus christ as the savior proclaim jesus christ as the sanctifier proclaim jesus christ as the most satisfying person and admonishing every man teaching every man from god's word with all wisdom so that those people will become complete in christ those people will trust in christ those people will obey christ those people will worship christ for this purpose also next word you please listen i labor striving according to his power which mightly 
works within me. In Galatians chapter 4 verse 19, he compared his travail on behalf of the church's spiritual progress to a mother's labor pain. In ESV translates it like this, I am again in the anguish of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. This is the picture of one for whom to live is Christ. It is the lay, laying down of your life in order to aid in the progressive sanctification of God's people. So you minister and you share God's word so that people will turn to Christ, people will enjoy Christ, people will obey Christ so that their life will become more and more sanctified. They will live a purified life. They will live a better life for their own good and for God's glory. And Paul regards none of this as a grim burdensome duty. It was simply the working out of his own salvation with fear and trembling as God graciously worked in him. Philippians chapter 2 verse 12 and 13 and also in 1 Corinthians 15 10 we read about this human responsibility from our part what we need to do in response to the great thing what God has planned for our life and also the sovereignty of God both are in active display in these verses where we work out as God is graciously working in us. As one commentator puts up, he didn't complain about all the physical ailments and the emotional turmoil that he would surely have to endure if he continued to live. Living in this life, living in this world is filled with emotional turmoil. It is filled with physical ailment. But in the midst of all those things, in fact, nothing could be farther from the truth. Paul's own desire and longing for this difficult, toilsome, wearisome, diligent labor re uh, uh, re revealed his desire to die and to be with Christ in heaven, to see Christ face to face. Or may we get to that place where difficult ministry is a labor of love. But perhaps the most important thing to note, though, is uh, is the is that Paul's sanctified dilemma was not a battle between being with Christ and not being with Christ. He is not telling that if I die, I will be with Christ and if I am here in this world, I am away from Christ. No, it was not a choice between Christ and the people of Christ. Rather, to minister Christ to others, to share the goodness of Christ to others, to share the cross of Christ with others, to labor so that others would come to treasure Christ as more valuable than anything, is itself an act of worship and fellowship with Christ. And as we proclaim Jesus Christ as a loving Savior, a humble Savior who came down in the, into this world, and when we share Christ, we are having a fellowship with Christ. We are worshipping Christ by praising Christ and magnifying Christ. As H.G. Moore said, Paul was a dilemma between Christ and Christ. Christ much and Christ more. Christ by faith and Christ by sight. In this life you are living by putting your trust in Christ and you are living by faith. Faith in Christ. But Death will take you to a place where you will see Christ for who he is. And Christ by faith and Christ by sight. For Paul, to die was to gain more of Christ. But to live was also for Christ. And so Paul was not choosing to serve people of God over serving and worshipping Christ himself. He was choosing to worship and serve Christ by serving Christ's people. And that's how this text fits with the previous one. In verse 19 to 21, we sta stated a number of times that to live is Christ means to be more satisfied by Christ than by all that life can offer. So verses 19 to 21 teaches us that first great duty of every Christian is to open his own eyes and tune his own heart to the word of God. 
I need to open my eyes, open my ears, tune my heart to the word of God so that he or you and me will be more satisfied by Christ than anything else in the entire world. But now, when we learn, we learn from verse 22 to 26 is, if for you to live is Christ, such that all the world and even your own very life is counted as rubbish, so that you may gain Christ, then you must lay down your life in diligent labor, so that others will come to have that same passion, so that others will see Christ clearly, and so be satisfied in Him that for them he is more precious than all that life can offer and all that death can take. So why I am sharing about Christ? Why I am sharing what Paul is sharing about Christ? Christ is a beautiful savior. Jesus Christ, he can satisfy your life. He can prepare you for life and life to come. He can prepare you and give you hope even in the midst of trouble, even in the midst of death and disease and problem but for that we need to look to God's word to see him more clearly and perceive him in our hearts more clearly. This is exactly what Paul means when he says he labors for their progress and joy in the faith. There is a progress in faith. We must put more and more faith and more and more trust in the Lord Jesus Christ as we know him more and more, it will become more easy and spontaneous and automatic to trust and obey the Lord Jesus Christ. There is a joy in the faith. The faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, it gives so much of joy, so much of, so much of contentment in our life. What is the spiritual progress but growing to worship Christ more fully in all areas of your life? And what is joy but the experience of satisfaction in Christ that magnifies us his worth. Put simply, as we pursue our joy in Christ above all else, as we diligently labor to help others pursue their joy in Christ above all else, we live to put Christ on display as magnificently glorious. And that means that living for God's glory and living so that others come to find their joy and satisfaction in Christ are not two separate things. They are the same. We live for the glory of Christ when we surrender our lives to make others glad in God. I want you to be glad in God. I want you to come out of your gloomy life, your self-centered life. When our lives start revolving around God and His Word, when our lives start revolving around God's program, when our lives start revolving around God's purposes for our life, when our lives start revolving around the kingdom of God, we will be able to find joy and satisfaction in the, His world. At the same time, we will be able to anticipate the death as a departure to a better place that is heaven itself the abode of God the the dwelling place of God where he is promised a dwelling place for every repentant sinner and so following Paul's example of godliness as we continue to live on in our flesh our lives must be characterized by the diligent labor of the gospel ministry for the increasing progress and joy of God's people. Only when Christ-likeness is manifested in the lives of every single child of God, we will have joy. We will have satisfaction. Now you say, that's great. But what's the application for those of us who are in uh, uh, pastors or teachers or missionaries or seminary professors? And the answer is, the application is the same for everybody because all of us are ministers of the New Testament and New Covenant. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. The entire church is called a royal priesthood. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. The entire church is called as a royal priesthood, which means that every individual Christian is a priest of God to bless the world. 
when the application of scripture seems to fit most naturally for those who are ministry rejoice because you are in ministry everywhere you are everywhere you are you may not earn your living from the gospel but you are all called to ministry as members of the body of Christ so the first way to apply laboring for the progress and joy of God's people is to be actively involved and actively participating in the ministry of a local assembly local church that starts with committing to being on every sunday to worship the lord jesus christ and it means to getting up early in the morning and be in fellowship with god's people study the bible study the scripture look into god's word so that you ans you ask many questions as many questions you have bible is a treasure of information it is the word of truth it is the word of life it is the word of christ it is the the inspired word by the holy spirit and it will answer your deep seated questions beyond measure beyond your imagination every question will be answered deep down in your soul if you align your life to god's word and god's purposes so it is my prayer from the bottom of my heart even as we have gone through many passages and many themes of this book of philippians that you will you will take these truths seriously and make your own investigation make your own active probing into this matter about life and death how can a person live above circumstances and situation how can a person live in the light of the written word of god and be joyous in the in the midst of the deep troubles and deep painful situations in our life and as you minister this way in an assembly in a church the question you must ask yourself how can i put the glory and worth and the loveliness of christ on display what can i do or say to draw attention to jesus christ what can i do or say that will help others come to see and savor him for who he is if you are faithful to ask and answer those questions often then put those answers into practice you will labor faithfully for the progress and joy of your fellow believers and this can be done everywhere during your job during your uh, 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 family time together in every way you allow the knowledge about jesus christ to permeate in and through your life and in that regard and may the lord god enable each and every one of you and draw yourself to himself draw all of you to himself uh, to the reading and meditating of god's word may the lord bless each and every one of you let us close with a word of prayer gracious god our loving heavenly father we thank you for this time thank you for giving us this opportunity to listen from god's word thank you for your word the world will pass away but your word will endure forever so lord we are looking into that word and in the days to come enable us to be good disciples of the lord jesus christ enable us to read your word diligently and with a purpose to know you and see you through in our hearts so that we will live in this world as your testimony and glorify you and also be blessed in this life and the life to come beyond our death we ask all these things in the most precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen